everyone! In this video, I'll be showing you how to use a sewing machine. This video was requested a lot, so I did it for you. Here I have two sewing machines. They're both pretty much the same, but with slight differences, so I'll be able to help you with two different kinds. This sewing machine right here is a Singer 4166. This is the sewing machine I use in all my tutorials. I got this sewing machine at Costco. This sewing machine is a basic Singer Tradition 2250. You can get this one at Target for about $80. If you're starting out how to sew, this machine is a good one for you because it's basic, affordable, and easy to use. The first thing you need to do to use this sewing machine, you need to get the cords out and plug it in. The sewing machine comes with two cords. The cord to plug it in to give it power, and the pedal. So get the end of the cord and plug it in. The foot pedal should be right under your table. The harder you press the foot pedal, the faster the needle will go. Here are the parts of the sewing machine. This will determine your length of your stitch. So you can make it big or small. This is the switch that determines the tension of your thread. If you're sewing a fabric that's light and flowy, you want to put it on a low tension so it doesn't scrunch up. If you're sewing canvas and thick material, you want to put it to the tighter tension, which is about this range, 3 to 5. This is where you place your thread. Take this bobbin. It usually comes with your sewing machine, so you should have one. If you don't, you can find it at the craft store. Next, get your thread and put it on the thread holder and you're going to pull some out. Place your bobbin on the bobbin winder and switch it over. Get the thread, wrap it around the thread winder like this. Place the end of the thread inside one of the bobbin holes. It should be sticking out like so. Turn on your sewing machine and press on the foot pedal but make sure it's switched over like so. If you don't switch it over to the right, it will move your needle and not wind your bobbin so this is very important. This little circle will stop your thread when it's full. Press on the foot pedal. Hold on to the thread. After it's been winded up a little bit, you can trim your thread. After it's done winding, cut your thread. Switch the bobbin winder to the left to take out the bobbin. Take the thread out of the bobbin thread guide and place it on the upper thread guide. Now place the string right down this slit and place it up to the upper thread guide. Make sure the needle is up using the hand winder so the upper thread guide can come up like this. Put the thread right under like so. See how the thread is inside? Place the thread on this little slit to hold the thread in place. Now you thread it through the needle. If the end of your thread is dull and frayed, trim the end of the thread at an angle so it's easier to place in the hole. Now your top thread is threaded. Place it under the presser foot and let it hang. Next you're going to take the bobbin holder out and place the bobbin inside. Get the end of the thread and pull it through this little loop. So it should be sticking out like so. Place it back inside. Let it hang. Hold the top thread and wind the needle down to pick up this thread using the hand wheel forward. Wind it forward. 
until the needle's back to the top. Now pull the thread It should stick out like so. Get your scissors and slide it right under. Now you have both threads above the needle plate and now you're ready to sew. This is the needle plate by the way. Close this and place this back inside. Place your fabric between the presser foot which is this and the needle plate. So right between that, place your presser foot down. This is the lever that's going to place the presser foot down. So you want to leave it down at all times when sewing. The foot pedal with your foot slowly. To lock your stitches, you're going to press the reverse button at the beginning at the end to keep your stitches in place. So this machine, you need to press the reverse button down while using the foot pedal so it can work. So it's going backwards. Now that you've locked your stitch, you can continue on down. This is how it looks so far. See how it looks thick? That's where we lock the stitches. And this is the normal stitching. This is zigzag stitches you can choose any width you want. A zigzag stitch is used when sewing stretchy materials and for other purposes as well. Here are some tips and tricks you should know. As you're sewing and you want to turn to the opposite to a different angle, you want to make sure using your hand wheel make sure the needle is down. So when you turn it, your fabric won't move. See? If it was up and you move it, you can lose your place because it's moving. The needle is down, so when you turn it, you just go straight. See how sharp it is? Another tip and trick you should know that is very, very helpful. So as you're sewing, only just hold it and let it move by itself. Like this. Never pull it at the back. Never do that. Because many times I've done that, it's broken my needle, it's messed up the stitching, causes a bunch of thread bunched up at the bottom. So never do that. These little levers, ridges at the bottom, is what moves the fabric. So it already does the work for you. If you ever find thread bunched up under your fabric, that may be because your tension is too loose. So just tighten it to about 3 to 4. When using your hand wheel, always move it clockwise forward. Never use it backwards counterclockwise. When sewing, it's good to have a thread cutter to cut your thread instead of using your fabric scissors because when using your fabric scissors, you can make this part, wherever you cut the thread, it can make your scissors dull. So when you use your thread cutter, it's made especially to cut your thread. To sew a straight line, you can follow these lines the sewing needle plate comes with. If your needle keeps breaking, you want to make sure your needle is not bent in a weird way. Because then, this is where the needle goes in inside. And if it hits right here and right here, that's what causes it to break sometimes. As you can see, I've broken needles that way before. That's why it's kind of engraved right here. It can also be caused by sewing thick materials. So just make sure you're not pulling your fabric as you're sewing and make sure your needle's not bent. Another reason that causes your needle to break is by using the wrong needle with the wrong fabric. Here's a chart that lists the right size for each material. The size of the needle is marked on the flat side of the needle, also known as a shaft. You can take a snapshot of the chart, but I also have a picture on my Facebook page. To change the presser foot, there's a little lever on the side of the machine. When you push that, it releases the foot, and you can take this out. 
That is so you can use a zipper foot when sewing a zipper. If your zipper teeth is on the left side, you're going to use the left side of the zipper foot. Press your foot down to grab the zipper foot. If your needle ever breaks, girl, I got you. I'm going to show you how to change your needle. Next to your needle, there should be a needle clamp screw. Your sewing machine comes with an L screwdriver. That is going to help you with several things on this machine. Remove your needle plate just in case something gets stuck inside and it's going to help you remove your needle. You're going to get one end of this little tool and put it inside this little slit and turn it towards you. Now that you feel that it's loose, you're going to pull the needle down, like so. You just remove the needle. When replacing your needle, there's a flat side and a round side at the top. The flat side is going to go at the back and the rounded side is going to go facing you. So you're going to put it back inside, right in the middle of the presser foot. You're going to place it up, and it should stay, but you need to wind it forward and tighten it. You might have to hold it a little. It's best to change the needle when the sewing machine is off because you don't want any accidents. Ta-da! You just changed your needle! Now I'll be showing you the features on the sewing machine I use in my tutorials. So this side is going to determine the stitch length. This side is going to determine the zigzag stitch length and this is going to determine the number of each stitch. So if I wanted to do a zigzag stitch, that's number 6. So I go to number 6. And it's ready for a zigzag stitch. You change the presser foot the same way as the other machine, and you change the needle the same way as the other machine. And this presser foot lever is on the side. My other machine had it at the back. As you can see in this machine, the bobbin is on the top part right here. So if you remove this, it's not on the side like the other one. This machine has little ridges, so you move that to the right while pushing the corner to remove the bobbin cover. Remove the bobbin, so you wind the bobbin the same way as the other one. See how it's the same? So you're just going to place the bobbin right inside. The thread sticks out like so. And pull it through this little slit. Hold it down. Make sure it's under and pull it out. The thread should be right there. And out. Out and about. Place the bobbin cover back. Thread should be coming out of here. Now I'm threading the upper thread the same way as the other machine. This is for the needle to go up and down once. It automatically lifts the lower thread. Hold the thread, press this button, and pull the upper thread. Put the scissors through. Now you have both threads above the needle plate. So I hope this video was very helpful. Leave any questions or video requests in the comments. Now go to the thrift store, go to your attic, your garage, your grandma's house, your mother's house, your father's house, and get that dusty sewing machine. Pull it out and now you can make some cool projects. The skirt tutorial I did last year is very basic and it's good for beginners so now that you know how to use your sewing machine if you want to practice making a skirt I think this skirt tutorial I did is a good one because it's very easy and good for beginners and you can learn how to sew that way some people say I don't know how to sew I can't make that well if it's something basic like like a skirt you can do it it's like it's like saying I need to learn how to ride a bike before I, before I ride a bike.
Mm, that doesn't make sense. You need to ride the bike to learn how to ride the bike. Right? So now that you know how to use a sewing machine, go practice. And it's okay if you make mistakes. You learn from your mistakes. That's, that's how I learned. I didn't get any lessons. I was self-taught. So you just learn from your mistakes. And make sure you don't use any materials that's expensive or you don't want to ruin. Practice on materials that are cheap and something you don't really care much for if you mess up. Like my Facebook page and follow me on Instagram to get inside scoops on my upcoming videos. Thank you for watching. I'll include a timeline of this video in the description box. See how the Moodle... <laughs> See how the Moodle... <laughs> so I hope... Ugh. Get your sewing on, get your sewing on, get your sewing on. <sighs>